Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I have a really special one for you today because I'm going to be covering the highly requested altcoin of your choice. I'll be going over my Elliott Wave count on the altcoin and how we're looking to trade this into the future. So I hope that you really enjoy and can learn something from this video. That's my aim of this, to pass on some knowledge and insights onto you so you can integrate this into your daily trading strategies. Um, and yeah, without further said or do, we obviously the Bitcoin really simply exactly the same range as we were looking at in the previous video between this value area low and value area high really 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 well respected even on that drop that we saw yesterday we tapped it once again to pretty much the dollar rising back up to the highs back to the poc at the moment so bitcoin you know it's just like a piece of cake at the moment if you love trading ranges as we do you know this this is simply what you got right now on bitcoin i do want to focus on the altcoins though today and I put it over on Twitter, we are going to be looking at Sol, Solana. Obviously, a lot of hype recently about Luna. And if you know your Spanish, como yo, uh, you know Luna means the moon, Sol means the sun. And obviously, the b bigger and brighter brother of the two, the better altcoin Sol, is what I'm going to be focusing on today. Obviously, everyone's had a lot of fun trading Luna, uh, if you've been on the right side of the market, I suppose. If you've, <laughs> it's just say it's been very volatile, but so has Sol. And uh, of course, yes, today, I am back. So you've been in good hands with Mike, Igor, George, Victor, trading assistant. Today you're going to have me. And with that said, let's go over to the Solana chart. Of course, we can be trading Sol against USDT Tether or USD, you know, the, uh, the a whole bunch of different stable coins now you have over on Bybit. But I am personally trading it against Tether. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to focus primarily on Sol BTC. You have to keep in mind, though, when I do trade this on Bybit, I am trading it against Sol USDT. But nevertheless, I'm going to focus my analysis today on Sol BTC and how this really integrates thoroughly into, you know, when we're trading it against USD. OK, obviously, bottoms recently uh, hit about $40. OK, so just keep that in mind. As Bitcoin was hitting that $25,000 zone, Solana was also hitting uh, about $40. OK, this is on Bybit anyway. Um, so, what, yeah, I actually want to cover, you know, really the Elliott Wave count. I want to start off here and just give you this blank picture of the chart. And... You know, I just want you to really get into my brain here for a second because, let's be honest, I have quite a good trading brain, quite good at recognizing what's the most likely scenario to come, and then, you know, actually trading that scenario. And the last time I looked at Solana was back at the, you know, around March time, okay, end of March, and I done a special members only update. And within this special members only update, I went through a whole bunch of different altcoins and recognizing the very best opportunities, okay? We were looking for drops, we got the drops, and where, you know, where is the next best opportunity? And Solana actually followed an Elliott Wave count that I'd done pretty brilliantly. You can see this was on the 29th of March, having over 6,000 views. Uh, this was just a members only update. You can see a lot of people very obrigado, Daniel. A lot of people very happy with uh, the update that I gave. And I'm not surprised because it was a good one. But during this Elliott Wave count session, uh, I obviously looked at Sol along with a bunch of other ones because this was a two hour long special live stream. But we were looking for this wave four rise to the upside. And then the most important thing was this move down for the wave five. OK, we were very well, I was personally anyway, we were going to be looking for that final push to the downside to then finally complete the wave one, two. We knew we had bottomed at four. Uh, sorry, had bottomed at wave three. We had the A, we had the B, we needed to see the C push up for the wave four, and then that final push down, breaking the low to finish the wave five, obviously at the bottom of our pitch fault that we had going on here. So just look at this, that was the prediction, and this is how that prediction came to life. Pretty outstanding if I say so myself. We basically did get in the end that wave A, B, it was a large push up for C, but it was at the same time that Bitcoin was obviously coming up for our harmonic. And as you know, Bitcoin done the failed auction at $47,000, took the high, come back down below, crashed, and really, you know, an absolutely similar scenario here on Solana, come up, took the high, failed auction, and, you know, crashed. Where did it crash down to? The bottom of our pitchfork, mm, madre mia, absolutely perfectly. So this is the power of Elliott Waves. We then have our A, B, and look at this, the C right at the bottom of that pitchfork. It's just absolutely perfect. Perfect. Okay. And then we can also see within this wave C the one, two, three, ABC and the wave four, final push down for the wave five. Okay. So this is, you know, just showing you the absolute power and how you can predict with pretty amazing precision where price is going to be going to go next. Okay. Obviously, as we're coming along in this Elliott wave count, 
I want to just show you a, a few posts. Obviously, I am going to get into the lower term time frame action here, what's happening on the lower term time frames and what we're looking at next. But I'm just trying to hopefully inspire, excite you and show you what's possible here with the trading. Okay, and so what happened here as we were coming down? Okay, so we were obviously making our way down. We had put in our way four. How can we recognize that? Looking at Bitcoin, we knew Bitcoin was very likely to crash after rejecting that 47k zone. And Solana, the exact same scenario. As soon as you've seen it come up here, fell auction to highs, you know, we've, we've always thought the most likely scenario is lower. Then you've just got to remain calm, you know, hopefully have taken that short position. And then you can remain very calm, patient, waiting for that lower price. I personally was short and chill. And you know, where did I take profits? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Dios mío. <laughs> this is the excitement. This is the excitement building up inside me. Where did I take profits, ladies and gentlemen? I'll give you one guess. Do you think it was the daily? Do you think it was the daily? Well, I'm going to show you the post inside of the group that I made to prove to you that, yes, it was the daily called in advance. Okay, so obviously I was updating my team here. The Solana Elliott wave count is so nice. We're still looking for lower. We're still looking for the bottom of this channel. I actually then got oh, you know, asked about DOT. What do I think is going to happen to DOT? My answer to that was, by the way, I'm in a short on DOT. I'm still waiting for lower. I'm fully hedged. And then I also got the same, he asked the same question of what do I think is going to happen to Atom? Guess what my answer was? I'm remaining short on Atom as well, expecting lower to come. That obviously went down to around $8, by the way. Uh, so yeah. Just emphasizing here, I was short on quite a lot of altcoins that are actually fairly popular by myself. But guess what? I'm not trading a bias. I'm not trading what I want. I'm trading the charts, remaining short on DOT, remaining short on Adam, remaining short on Sol. What am I waiting for? These lower price targets that I have. Okay. And what was my next post? coming up in the following days, it was this one here. Oh, I'm really proud of this Solana Elliott wave count coming into the pitchfork low and daily now. This is where I'm taking 35% profit on my short trade. So I have planned ready in advance. I'll show you this. This is at 7.03 a.m. UK time. Please do your own research. Verify what I'm saying here is correct and true because it truly is. At 7.03, I said, I'm going to be taking 35% profit. This is over a third of my short position. This is a really, really, really big trade. And I'm saying to my team, this is where I'm going to take over a third of my profits on this daily. Then we obviously can, you know, look for longs at the same time. Why am I taking such a big percentage of profit on this level after shorting the very high of the rally? Well, because this for me is the major support. This is the major support that I'm ready and waiting for. Well, we all know what the reaction off of that was. Uh, I was saying to my team a few days later, you all, you, you all saw that reaction, right? That was called and given to you pretty much on a, on a piece of paper, on a, on a silver platter, I suppose the right word. Is. But I just want to show you this on a lower term time frame. You know, that is the wick onto the daily. That was the absolute very, very, very low. Again, remember, I'm trading this against Tether. I'm recognizing, okay, Bitcoin's hitting the weekly naked point of control down there around $25,000. Solana here coming into my massive pitchfork daily support. Personally, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'd already had preset limit orders to take 35% profits. And obviously I have to adjust this to around that $40 mark on against Tether, okay? So obviously my brain is fairly, uh, I'm not gonna say advanced, but I'm, I'm really good at thinking, you know, bringing the three pieces together, Bitcoin, Solana against Bitcoin, Solana, Solana against Tether, working out I'm trading Tether, but I need to take into uh, the equation, the other two factors of the bit of the puzzle you know, bringing this together and obviously for the bounce that we got here. Just want to show you here the actual percentage from the low to the high is over 30%, by the way. This is a 35% bounce, a 35% bounce in under one week. Yes, this is, is I don't need to say it. that's an incredible, incredible amount of money to be made off of that. If if you were, uh, let's just say, paying attention to what I wrote inside of the Discord, or if you were ready or waiting for some of the levels I gave over a month in advance, Hey, it was pretty nice. And so now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, Daniel, very well done. So, so what, uh, what, what are, are even more confluences that I can show you here? And then what are some of the next levels to be looking at? Well, I want to just add on this a second. If we just hide this, let's hide this, let's hide this, and let's just put on this a second. Okay, you can see this this Fibonacci that I've got pulled here is down from where I had in the wave, the wave two low. So if we add on the Elliott waves there, you see this is the wave two low. And uh, let's just add that back on. So just reminding you, I've pulled this Fibonacci from the wave two low to the, the top of my wave three, okay? And what you can see here is once you've pulled that Fibonacci from the wave two low to the top of the wave three here, we actually come in and we touch the top of the CC. So we not only have the daily, we not only have the bottom of the pitchfork, we not only have Bitcoin hitting the weekly naked point of control, we not only have Solana hitting that $40 zone, <laughs> but we also have Bitcoin 
coming in here to the top of the CC for a 35% bounce. You know, you could start to acknowledge here, wow, yeah, this was a really, 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 really big level of support. No, there's no surprise that this bounced, okay? That's why we got to not be greedy, take profits on shorts, look for the low, long positions at the same time. What you can actually then see is when you, um, you know, when you actually see that first and original bounce, and if you miss that long, guess what you could have done? Pulled your fib from the low, up to the high, you got a retest of that CC. So that's then seeing the support come in for a really, really, really big bounce, okay? And then you got the retest, you got this low, you know, this arguably a very low, you know, low risk retest because the invalidation would have been simply coming back below this low, okay? So and then in that position, you're then left with a very nice long, okay? Because you have your invalidation in place. So. Hey, I have I have the money to influence the markets at certain points in price. Let's just say that. But then, if you if you don't, you know, let's just say if you want a safer trade, then obviously you can get in on this retest. And you've already seen over, you know, now 30% bounce in price. So you might be thinking, okay, then we're obviously, you know, what's happening now? What is to come next? Well, I've just added on, added on a few levels here. What we can see is that for me, this daily is a really, 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 really big resistance. You have to remember, this is still a, a quite far away. And a few questions that you might be wondering to yourself. Daniel, is now a good time to long? Okay, would or, or I, I don't want to specifically answer this question. Let's just say this: Would I long here if I was in no position at all? Would would this be a place that I'd be thinking, "Oh my God, yeah, this is an amazing long opportunity"? Well, the, obviously, the answer is: the more that this is bounced, the lower the the lower the prime opportunity is. You have to remember we have now bounced over thirty five percent in one week. Is this as good as an opportunity? as it was when we were actually hitting support? The answer, of course, is no. What we'd have to do is come down here on a lower term time frame, you know, come into the lower the lower range that we have here. And of course, you can get an entry up here, but it's off of based off of a much lower term time frame that I'm, what I'm going to cover in, in this particular video. What I'm going to look at is here the higher term time frame resistance that we have that's obviously coming in here around this daily. Okay, this is a major, 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 major resistance level. Okay, currently, in my opinion, this is very much like Bitcoin. Bitcoin coming up to that $32,000 zone. We all know Bitcoin consolidated around $32,000 before the drop to 35k this really reminds me of that bitcoin level so if, if bitcoin's reclaiming 32k of course when we can expect the same on solana here to be fair but if bitcoin drops then you know there's a high probability that this is also going to drop down and, and, and test lower levels again locally but for me the higher term time frame resistance really is this daily it's actually if you if you do zoom out and look at this Okay, you pull a fixed range off of the last local price action. You're going to see this is also the value area low of this, um, you know, last area of consolidation range, the wave three coming into the potential wave five. So you have to think like this. I always think in terms of probabilities. If price is unable to reclaim levels such as 0 0.0025, write that on a bit of paper, 0 0.025. If price is unable to reclaim that, then of course we still have, we can still say there's a, there's a high probability of price going lower. Why? Because if price is unable to flip resistance into support, why would we not think that this can go lower? Of course, we have to acknowledge this is a still a high potential. Okay. Yes, we've put in a mate. Yes, we have put in a lovely bottom locally. Yes, we've had a 35% bounce from that low. Yes, I personally did take 35% profits off of a short. I did not close it all, but 35% profits is a high, high percentage, especially when you're trading with the amount of money I'm trading with. This is a high percentage take profit, a lot of, a lot of profit taken did also take a long position off of the lower term time frames. So, you know, I'm, I'm positioned for, for higher prices here, but I'm also recognizing, hey, we have not seen any major sign of strength. Yes, we've got the bounce, but we haven't seen anything major here. I know this is a massive, massive, massive resistance above us. So why can we not just, even from here, we could drop exactly where we are now. We could, this could be the high right now, or we could test the bigger resistance level and drop once more. But I have to recognize and acknowledge price can absolutely drop one more time to the downside, okay? Well, it could drop more than one more time, but I am prepared, okay, and acknowledging, hey, th this, this can drop once more. And if that is the case, well, guess what? We're gonna have to, go, 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 you know, we're gonna come back to the drawing board, we're gonna have to do some more in-depth technical analysis and work out our lower levels to the downside. You know, I could do this in about half an hour, but it's gonna, you know, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be a bit more of an in-depth video. So for, for what I'm leaving you with in this video is the reasons why we bounced where we bounced, how the Elliott wave can't really come together, you know, like something really special to be fair with you. The level of resistance, which I feel is the absolute critical and most important resistance on this chart, and that's for me around that 0 0.025, okay? It's a little bit above the daily, but for me, that's such a key and crucial level. 
Of course, if we do put in a high here and reject, we're going to start to, you know, I, this is what I would do really briefly. We're going to start to look at things such as the volume of this range. Where can we start to see confluences coming in here inside of this range? Okay, and look at this more as a local range. Okay, if we do end up breaking the absolute low, of course, this is when I'm at, well, actually, tonight I'm going to do much more in depth analysis. This is obviously the public video, just bringing your attention to some of the things I'm looking at, teaching you, you know, some of the ways that I've come about this. Uh, but if you want the more in-depth analysis where I'm going to be covering not just Solana, but many different altcoins that I have had under accumulation patterns over the past, well, over the past few months coming on, six months coming on, a year, I've been waiting for a lot of altcoins to drop. Uh, if you're in the group, you know some of the ones such as Tezos, etc. You know, I've been waiting a long time to accumulate these coins at lower prices. These lower prices have finally came. And, you know, tonight I'm going to do a, uh, a contenders live stream dedicated to the accumulation patterns that I have found on these altcoins, giving an update on the altcoin market, what I'm looking at, where I think the next best opportunities are for the you know medium to long term here, higher term time frame swing trades. Um, so yeah, if that's of interest to you, of course, you can come across to Chart Champions and uh, you know, say hello to myself and the team again. Chart Champions is not just me, but I am back now. I'm going to be as active as ever every single day. You can enjoy my company over in the Discord. And I'll drop some more golden nuggets like this. Hey, <laughs> let's just say it was a pretty good, pretty good heads up. Um, so yeah, I hope that you've really enjoyed this video. If you have, smash that like button. Uh, leave a comment down below of the next altcoin that you'd like me to look at. And again, I'll take the most requested altcoin. Um, smash this video, smash the like. I hope you've enjoyed. If you want to see more from myself, that's going to be over at chartchampions.com. And yeah, I'll cover in depth all of the altcoins for you tonight in that Contenders and Champions live stream. So yeah, once again, everybody, thank you ever so much. Hope you've thoroughly enjoyed. See you over in the Discord. And that's me signing off. Thank you ever so much. And I'll just end, of course, Everything I'm looking at here is for the educational reasons only. It's, of course, not financial advice. At the end of the day, you do have to do your own research. Um, but, you know, I'm just giving you my opinions and a bit of education and entertainment on the side. So thank you and have a good day. Cheers. Bye.